Welcome back everyone to another video and in today's video I'm going to be talking about cargo ships. I only have three that I can show you. I can't show off the Starfarer. I've showed it off many times before so I will speak about it but the ones I do have to show you are the Constellation, the Freelancer, and the Caterpillar and I will be explaining what the bonuses and negatives of each of them are. Why I think you should buy one over the other. To get right started in, I'm going to start off with the Freelancer. Then I will go to the Constellation, and I will go up in size. So the Freelancer. It is the most basic of large cargo ships. I have left out the Aurora because it is a starter ship, and I've already done a video with the Aurora in it. But it is also a cargo ship. So, the Freelancer. Of the star ships that we have in-game, the Freelancer is the smallest cargo hauler, but the most dedicated cargo hauler. It has big guns on it, it has big engines, and it comes in many different shapes and forms. Shapes, sizes, forms, very modular, many different versions of the Freelancer. It carries cargo, it has GN technology in it, which is alien technology, so that its engines run well, it's fast. The Freelancer all around is a very fun ship to fly and it's a very fun ship to own and the reason you would use it for cargo is because it is very dedicated on its cargo it is built to be used as a cargo and i will show you guys that now as i go inside because the real guts of the there are the guts of the freelancer if i go inside and close the door you'll see that there's crew space for four people there's four seats up front pilot seat, the co-pilot seat, and the two support seats, beds. I'm expecting that in these are bathroom shower type uh, compartments. Computer there. And then if you go further back, you get into uh, the place where you would put more important cargo, and then the regular cargo area, where you would put your regular box cargo and whatnot. So these pads in the floor, these grav plates allow you to hold cargo and allow you to keep cargo from moving so that the cargo stays where it's supposed to and doesn't float around in the ship because you can put cargo basically anywhere i could put cargo inside of a vanguard but there's nothing holding that cargo to so it would be bouncing around it would cause damage so the freelancer is small it's quaint but because of this, it can be operated by one person. It is a brilliant solo cargo transport if you're looking to transport substantial amounts of cargo. Because it doesn't need a second person. It can have a second person, or even four people, because there's the space for them. But you don't need four people. And there's also a turret on the back, so you could have five people working on a freelancer, but you don't need five people. So... That's the Freelancer. Great ship. I personally really enjoy it. For mid-tier cargo, this is going to be similar to my bomber video. There's not really going to be any that I like more than the others because I like a lot of these ships. But Freelancer for smaller scale cargo if you're wanting to be one person running cargo. Brilliant ship. Brilliant ship in general, even if you're not doing cargo with it. And then now I'm going to go on to the Constellation. Currently this is the Constellation Andromeda because we do not have the Taurus or Hangar or in-game or I do not own the Taurus so I can't own the Hangar. But the Andromeda is very similar to the Taurus. I can explain the differences. The Andromeda. It has... It's got a bigger signature because it's a bigger ship. It needs more people because it's a bigger ship. But that also means it's got more cargo. So the Andromeda's cargo bay can hold more boxes and crates than the Freelancer's bay, I believe. I believe it's um I believe it's something like fifty or sixty more SCU. Uh don't quote me on that because I may be wrong, but it does carry more cargo. But that does come at the again cost of you people and it being more expensive to cargo. 
So the constellation's defensive abilities are slightly stronger than the freelancers because again ship so it comes with four size fours instead of four threes but where the freelancer only had one turret the constellation has two the andromeda also has a entire suite of missile systems so it can fire missiles at any targets it needs to neutralize the freelancer has basic missiles on the outside of it it can use those missiles very well but it does not have nearly as many as the Andromeda does. So the Andromeda, like the other constellations, has the same front layout as the rest of the constellation. As I try and flatter. But it's the same front part of the constellation. So basically, everything from the bridge to the back of the living quarter is going to be the same. But right here is where it gets different. In the Andromeda, have the small little bay and then the maintenance area where all the equipment is and the snub fighter. In the Taurus, the bay is twice as long. So the bay comes back to about here. It comes back to where I'm. and where this is here, where there's that snub fighter, that snub fighter part is taken out, and this part here ends at this and it's pushed further back. So the Taurus, in the case that you wanted to do mid-range cargo transport with more than one person, is probably your best option. The Andromeda is good if you want to do high-risk cargo transport with a team of people. The Taurus will do mid to mid to high risk because it carries the same basic weapon loadout for the pilot, but it only carries one turret with a special compartment for cargo bottom turret. So in my opinion, Constellation, also great option. A pretty regular ship, going to be pretty easy to find in the verse, just like the Freelancer. They're both going to be very easy to find, and they both look really good in my opinion. So I will be right back, and I will show you guys the Caterpillar. Great Caterpillar is the larger, one of the larger cargo ships that is in the game. Okay, welcome back. And this is the Drake Caterpillar, one of the bigger Star Citizen cargo vessels. As you can see, it's much bigger than the Constellation and the Freelancer. But that is because it carries more cargo, and it is also made by Drake and Interplanetary. You will notice that when I go inside, because it's not going to look as streamlined and as smoothly built. So. The Caterpillar is built for long range, large transport, hence it being built the way it does have a bit of a pirate aesthetic to it and a pirate feel to it because the Drake ships in general have been thought in the past to be pirate ships, but the Caterpillar is a wonderful cargo ship. I will explain why as I show you guys the ports. So, the reason the Caterpillar, in my opinion, is a better cargo ship than the Starfarer is because the Caterpillar is more maneuverable than the Starfarer and it also carries more cargo internally. So the Caterpillar carries all of its cargo within the hold. Everything stays within one of these compartments. I'm going to jump back out of the ship so that I show you the ship will. So every single one of these compartments can hold cargo, and it can hold multiple boxes of cargo each, including the front. 
Meaning that everything in here can all be stored internally and every one of those pods, I believe, can carry about the same amount of cargo as a console. So imagine four times of that on one ship. And this also isn't too badly defended. It's got two gun or two turret in place with size four cannons on them. Plus the pilot's got two sets of size one guns, which aren't ridiculously powerful, but they will or they will deter anything small that gets in front of the cockpit. So one of the cool things about the Caterpillar being a big ship is it's got the engine rooms. It's got all of that stuff out in the open that you can get into in the back. But my and the thing that makes the Caterpillar seem really, really fun for me is the bridge can detach. This little pod that I'm showing you right now that I'm looking at, it can detach from the rest of the ship and fly around on its own. And it can be flown on its own pretty self-sufficiently. I don't know if it has a jump drive, but it can fly around. And one of the cool facts that I read in the Caterpillar brochure is that sometimes the Caterpillar crews, when it came to, oh, they had to get their cargo loaded. So somebody was on the deck cargo loading and doing all that kind of thing. But maybe you have three or four Caterpillars at the station. They would disconnect the cockpits and the bridge and they would fly it around and they would race each other, which is kind of whimsical. The other advantage to the Caterpillar over Starfarer is the Caterpillar, instead of having fuel refinement, the Caterpillar has a tractor beam system. So if you were to fly up to a damaged ship, not to say you pirated or did anything like that, maybe you did, I'm not gonna... But what would happen is, oh, there's boxes of cargo floating around. You could use that tractor beam send all of the cargo into the bay and you have somebody inside just waiting to lock it down and then you could have all your cargo secured in there and the advantage to having all of these different separated pods now people will probably be like oh why are the pods separated isn't that bad if you want to carry really long or really wide cargo not bad because it allows if you're doing multiple runs and you're going to multiple places in one cargo run each of the single pods can be opened or closed at will, and they each have cargo elevators. So if I wanted to, say, the front pod, I had parts for Mustangs, and I wanted to get them from one spot of the verse to the other. But say the third pod I needed to have fuel. I don't want to have to unload the third pod just to get those parts of Mustang out of the front pod. So with those pods, I don't have to. And all of those pods are going to be future are going to be modular in the future. So, personally, for large cargo, I prefer the Caterpillar to the Starfarer. The Starfarer dies way too easily right now, and it doesn't carry enough cargo internally. That being said, the Starfarer is a nice ship, it just doesn't do as well, in my opinion, cargo as it does just being a ship. I'm going to thank you guys again for watching this video. I will thank you guys again for enjoying, and I hope you enjoyed. And I'll remind you guys, please take a look in the description for my referral link and use the code in the description to sign up with Star Citizen if you haven't already. And when you sign up, get access to a draw that is for Aegis Gladius. If you guys have been around the channel, you know what an Aegis Gladius is. And you get a free one if you are one of the 10 people that are on my referral list when I hit 10 people or when I hit 10 referral. Thank you guys again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you guys all in the next video.